In solving quadratic equations so far, we have found several different ways of doing it. We have solved using tables and graphs, we've solved by factoring, and we've solved by completing the square. And each of these have their benefits, but there are some situations that none of those are overly convenient to be working with. So there is a way to use the standard form of a quadratic formula, ax squared plus bx plus c, as an equation equals zero to solve any type of equation. Now in doing this it's going to be a process similar to completing the square. What I'm going to show here is a representation of how this formula is derived and it goes like this. In order to complete the square we begin by having our a value of 1. So I'm going to divide all terms by a. So I end up with x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equals 0. I need to make it so I can complete the square. I'm going to subtract c over a. And this will leave me with x squared plus b over a x equals a negative c over a. Next, I need to fill in the space in order to complete the square. I take half of my b term, which is b over 2a, and I square it. So I'm going to add a b over 2a squared to each side of the equation. Now, I can factor down my left hand side. I end up with x plus b over 2a quantity squared equals a negative c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Now I'd like to be able to add the items on the right hand side to each other so I need to have a common denominator. I'm going to multiply it by 4 a numerator and denominator so times 4a over 4a and I end up with x plus b over 2a squared equals a negative sorry a positive 4ac over 4a squared plus b squared over 4a squared. I'm going to combine that right hand side, so I have x plus b over 2a quantity squared equals, since I have the b by itself, I'll put that first, I have b squared plus 4ac over 4a squared. Now I'm going to take the square root of each side, leaving me with x plus b over 2a equaling. When you take the square root of a fraction, you take the square root of the pieces. So I have plus or minus the square root of b squared plus 4ac over the square root of 4a squared is just 2a. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract b over 2a from each side of the equation. Sorry, b over 2a. And that will leave us with x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a. Now we run a danger here if a were ever 0, but if a was 0 we would not be working with a quadratic. So this item here is the quadratic formula. Anytime you have a squared, ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, you can simplify, you can solve it by using this form. Now this is a lot of work in order to use this, and it's a lot of substituting values in and then simplifying the overall problem. So let's get some practice with using that. So here are a pair of problems to be working with. First one, x squared plus 4x equals 3. In order to use the quadratic formula, it has to be in an equation form, which is equal to 0. 
So I'm going to subtract 3 from each side. x squared plus 4x minus 3 equals 0. Now I'm going to use my formula, which is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Substituting in values, I have a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 3, all divided by 2 times 1. And this is equal to negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16. 4 times 1 times negative 3 is a negative 12. So I'm going to add 12 divided by 2. Next, I get negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 28 divided by 2, which is negative, well, actually that's as far as we can go at this point. We could simplify what is inside of the radical. We would get negative 4 plus or minus 28 is 4 times 7. We can take the square root of 4, so we get 2 root 7 over 2, which is simply negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. The 4 divided by 2 is 2, and the 2 divided by 2 is 1. So, here is our full and complete answer for solving this equation using the quadratic formula. Now, let's try it again with our second equation. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 0. So again, using the quadratic formula, we have x equals negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 4 squared minus 2, sorry, minus 4 times 1 times 4, all divided by 2 times 1. So this is equal to a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 16. 4 times 1 times 4 is 16, divided by 2. So this gives us a negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 0, divided by 2, which is square root of 0 is 0, so I have negative 4 over 2, which is simply a negative 2. So this equation simplifies down to a single value. And knowing when we have a single value or multiple values or the possibility of no solutions at all, because we can't take the square root of a negative number, depends on one part of this quadratic formula. And that part is called the discriminant. So let's talk a little bit about the discriminant. In the quadratic formula, we have this part inside of the square root, the, neg the b squared minus 4ac. This is what is called the discriminant. Now, the reason that this is so important is because when we are graphing quadratic functions, we really have three different possibilities. So, three quick axes here. I'm going to show all these with a positive a value, but understand it could be a negative a value just as easily. So, If we were to graph, we could have an equation that crosses the y axis, the x axis twice. We could have one that comes down and just touches it and goes, or we could have one that doesn't touch it at all. Each of these demonstrates something different happening with the discriminant. The first situation here is what we ran into in the first e uh, equation that we solved. When our discriminant was simplified, our b squared minus 4ac, we were left with the number 28, which is greater than 0. And when we take the square root and solve an equations, we end up with a positive and negative versions. So we're going to have our negative b plus this value and our negative b minus this value. So we end up with two solutions. Our second equation was more like our second graph here. And inside of that square root, the discriminant, 
we had 16 minus 16. So our b squared minus 4ac was equal to 0. And in which case we're going to take the square root of 0 and end up with 0. So we just have our negative b over 2a. And our last situation is where we would have b squared minus 4ac being less than 0. Now if this is less than 0, it means that we're going to be taking the square root of a negative number, which we can't do, so we never actually cross the x-axis. Now, just knowing what is in our discriminants can help us greatly when it comes to solving equations. Let me show you how. So let's say you're out golfing and you hit a golf ball into the air from ground level with an initial upward velocity of 85 feet per second. The function h of t equals negative 16 t squared plus 85t models the height of the ball in feet after t seconds. Will the ball reach a height of 110 feet? Now in order to figure this out, what we need to do is start with our equation and substitute in the 110 feet for our final height. So we end up with 110 equals negative 16 t squared plus 85t. Then, going through the process of setting this equal to 0, I'm going to add 16t squared and subtract 85t from both sides. And what I come out with is 16t squared minus 85t plus 100 equals 0. Now I could have just as easily subtracted the 100 from each side, but that would have left me working with a negative a and a negative c value, so this is a bit easier. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my a, b, and c values and substitute them into the discriminant. So I have b squared minus 4ac, which becomes negative 85 squared minus 4 times 16 times 100. Now 16 times 4 is 64 so I end up with a negative 6400 on the right hand side of this expression and 85 squared is 7225. Now if I subtract this I'm going to end up with a positive 825. Because this is positive and now inside of our quadratic function quadratic equation we are going to have the square root of this 825, we are going to get two answers, a positive and negative. Which means that yes, the ball will reach this height, it will reach that height of 110 feet and surpass it because we're going to have two answers. We'll have the ball going up and coming back down in order to have uh, this be a positive number inside of the discriminant. So, quadratic function, sorry, quadratic equation, very useful, a bit time consuming, and takes some practice substituting in the right values. So, give it some practice, rewatch the sections of this video that you need, and let's move forward.